Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and boy, oh boy, have I prepared the most unbelievable meal for you today. Guys, if you like lemons, and if you like some zest, and I'm not even just talking about lemon zest, which will be in this dish as a finishing touch, but I'm talking like a little bit of a spicy zest, you've just met your most amazing match ever. Pepper some hot sausage in there if you want, or sweet if you don't want it spicy. You don't have to make it a spicy dish, but guys, we're going for a spicy pasta dish today that's lemon flavored. It's gonna be called Spicy Sausage Lemon Linguine because it's double alliteration, and you know, I love alliteration. So guys, I'm gonna go right to the Instant Pot because the game has been changed. This is literally one of the most spectacular pastas ever, literally ever, something you would get in a gourmet restaurant, except, listen, I'm wearing sweatpants, my favorite soup dumpling shirt, and no cares in the world. And I might have even slept till one o'clock this afternoon today. I don't even know, whatever. Today is just a lazy, rainy, cruddy day out there, but it's all gonna be happy, because this dish is gonna be literally what happiness is like inside your mouth. Right to the Instant Pot, because it's time for spicy sausage, lemon linguine. All right, folks, now one of the key ingredients in this recipe is going to be sausage. I really do like my sausage, and <laughs> being a Jewish guy, sometimes people are like, wait, I thought all Jews are kosher. Not true. Not true in the slightest bit. I respect the kosher laws, but this Jew over here loves his porky pig. And now, even though this is a spicy lemon sausage pasta dish, we don't have to use spicy ingredients. You can totally use sweet Italian sausage instead, but because I'm making a spicy sausage lemon linguine, I'm going to use hot Italian sausage. And what I want to do is I want to get all of the meat outside the casing. I like to call this my slit and split method. All you do is you take a nice sharp knife, the edge of it, here, drag it down the sausage link so you slit the casing, and then there you go, guys. Then you split the casing off and you pull it right off, and there you go. Ground sausage meat. Doesn't take any time at all. Now, in terms of how much you want to use for this, I think between one to two pounds is really the ideal range. One pound if you want a good amount of sausage, and two pounds if you want it super sausagey. I'm going somewhere in the middle, so I'm using a pound and a half. So I'll just do the slit and split on the rest of all of my sausage links. I feel like I make that like the, uh, the sister version to the bend and snap, you know what I mean? We'll call it the slit and split. That dance would be really, really interesting to watch, I have a feeling. It would definitely be an R-rated film. And by the way, guys, hot Italian sausage isn't even really that spicy. It's like a very mild spicy at most. All right, now I'm just going to put all of my hot Italian sausage that's uncased now and put it right in a bowl. All right, let's move on. Now I want to take two shallots and dice it up. And now we've come to our other core ingredient, our lemons, guys. These are super, super important, obviously, in the sauce. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a spicy or not spicy, if you don't want to have the spice in there, lemon linguine. I'm going to take three lemons, and then to one of those lemons, well, probably the largest lemon, I'm going to take a microplane or a zester or a cheese grater, whatever you want to do, and then I'm going to zest all of the uh, entire, basically, lemon skin so I get a lovely lemon zest. And I'm only saving this now because we're going to use this as a finishing touch when we serve. It's going to make a nice garnish, but a microplane makes it super easy. It's almost like playing a a violin but like on a lemon love it and it's really almost impossible to like slice your fingers open which is why I prefer this to a cheese grater and then I'll just put my lemon zest inside of a little bowl here and just as you go along just dump your zest into a bowl and then just keep zesting that lemon but you know what I have magical powers let's speed things along here and there we have it guys zested nice and done thanks to that amazing microplane and a link where you can get one now with our three lemons what I want to do here is I want to juice them and there we have it, nice and juiced. Now let's go to the pot. All right, now to the Instant Pot, let's add in four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. All right, now we're gonna come down to the Instant Pot and hit saute and adjust so we're on the more or the high setting. We just wanna give it the oil some heat and give it about three minutes of heating up. And after about three minutes of our oil heating up in the pot, we're going to then toss in our shallots. And then we're gonna saute the shallots in the pot for about three minutes. All right, and after about three minutes of our shallots sauteing in our olive oil, I wanna now add in a half a stick or four tablespoons of salted butter. And let's get that all melted in the pot. And you can help swish it around with this wooden spatula or mixing spoon that's gonna melt very quickly. And now the reason why I've added butter to the pot 
is because I'm going to add in another veggie here that I absolutely love and I think complements this pasta dish really well, and that is gonna be some mushrooms, guys. Some shrooms! I'm going to add in 16 ounces of Baby Bella mushrooms that are already sliced. If you absolutely hate mushrooms, don't add them, but also don't add the butter. It's not necessary if you're not adding the mushrooms because the mushrooms are gonna absorb a lot of that butter and a lot of the oil. And what I wanna do now is I wanna saute the mushrooms in the pot, and now I wanna toss my mushrooms so they're completely coated in the butter and the oil and the shallots, and let those saute in the pot for about another three to five minutes. I wanna get them cooked down a bit and softened. Now you're gonna see the bottom of the pot is gonna become a little bit brown with the mushrooms wanting to stick onto it a little bit. That's fine, don't worry about it. We'll get back to that in a minute and we'll get it all cleared. So while you're sauteing the mushrooms, you really do wanna constantly be stirring them around to give even cooking. We don't want them to just sit there. And you'll see as they start to cook down, they release plenty of water and you see then you can automatically deglaze or scrape the bottom of the pot clear of any brownness that were stuck on it. Basically resolves itself. It like cleans up itself. I mean, shrooms are magic, aren't they? And then once your mushrooms look like this and they've really released like almost like this beautiful, beautiful like uh, glaze in the bottom of the pot, we are ready. This is gonna be really about five minutes. And again, if you don't want any mushrooms in there, just skip the butter and the shrooms and go to the next step. And that's going to be to add in two tablespoons of crushed or minced garlic. And we'll store that around in the pot and let that cook with the mushrooms and the shallots for another minute. Okay, absolutely awesome. We are looking perfect. And now it is time to add in our sausage. And I wanna get in there and I wanna really crumble it up with like a wooden spatula or a mixing spoon, just you know, really just chop it up in there. And we're gonna saute this in the pot with all the mushrooms and all the veggies for about another three minutes. We just want our sausage to be slightly browned. It's gonna be fully cooked once we actually pressure cook everything. Right now the important thing is to focus on breaking the sausage down. It'll become a crumble just like a ground beef. And when you put the mushrooms in earlier, guys, it feels like so many more than you're actually going to see in the dish when it's finished. Like 16 ounces cooks down to nothing. It's just gonna basically be a small little accent of the dish. Just in case you're afraid of mushrooms, all right? Don't be scared of the mushrooms. Trust the mushrooms. Just ask Alice from Alice in Wonderland. They did wonderful things for her. All right, and now our sausage is just lightly browned. That's exactly what we want. Doesn't need to be fully cooked at this point. And now, guys, let's lemon it up. I'm going to add in my lemon juice. And I'm going to let everything simmer in the lemon juice for about two minutes. Okay, and after about two minutes of all the contents in the pot simmering in that lemon juice, we're going to add in some broth. I'm going to add in three and a half cups, and you can use a broth of your choice, whether it be chicken broth or garlic broth. And garlic broth would be three and a half teaspoons of garlic better than bouillon, and then mix that with three and a half cups of water. Pour it right to the pot. And I want to season this up with one teaspoon each of dried parsley and dried oregano. And if you're gonna have it spicy, like I want to have it, I'm going to also add in, this is optional, just like using hot sausage versus sweet is optional, a half a teaspoon each of cayenne pepper and crushed red pepper flakes. And now let's stir that around in the pot so it's nice and incorporated with everything else. And we are looking good. It is now time to add in our pasta. For this, guys, I am going to use linguine because, well, I like alliteration, lemon linguine, and because, well, I love linguine. It's like in between a spaghetti and a fettuccine. It's like a little bit of a flatter spaghetti. And now I know this is sacrilegious to many a Nona out there, but I have to take my linguine over the pot, and in order for it to fit in there properly, I don't want it to be like this. I want to make sure it's completely submerged. Now I'm going to get my hands dirty for you just to show you that sample and example. I need to break it in half. I assure you, you won't even be able to feel the difference once it's in there, okay? I promise. It's already long enough. Break it off, put it in, and don't get mad at me for doing that. Now simply take, like, you know, our wooden spatula, our handy dandy wooden spatula, and then just smooth the linguine out so it's submerged in all of our broth. If some of it's a little bit peaked above, that's fine. We want it to be just really like this. So it's nice and covered. Perfect. And we have one final step, and that is to add in some baby spinach. You can add in between, really, five to eight ounces if you'd like. Just drop it on top of everything in the pot. 
Do not stir that. Simply leave it where it is. And now we're going to secure our lid. Make sure that we're in the sealing position. Now let's come down to the control panel again and hit the cancel or the keep warm cancel button. And then hit the pressure cook or manual button. And we want to go on this guys for six minutes at high pressure. And by the way, if you have a dual plus series and it says this normal, less or more, ignore that. Always make sure the top one's on normal if you have that. But leave it on high pressure. Six minutes, high pressure. And again, if you're on a dual plus, leave it on normal. It's time to do a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so let's take our lid off. And there we go again, another blanket of spinach. That's always what happens, by the way, whenever spinach cooks on top of any dish, it becomes a blanket of spinach. Now let's get in there, guys, and give everything a good stir. Oh boy, already amazing. Look at this. Fantastic. Now, you'll see we have some broth left in there. That's a good thing, guys. We want that to be the case because it's going to thicken up in just a second. I want to add in one cup of grated Parmesan cheese and stir that in with everything in the pot. The cheese is going to absorb more of the broth and help thicken things a bit. All right. This is looking excellent so far. And I have one more final ingredient, and that's going to be a quarter of a cup of heavy cream or half and half. Just pour that over, stir it up in the pot. Looking really, really gorgeous, guys. And now I want you to just let this sit here for literally about three minutes, and then we are going to serve it up. That's it, just three minutes. Let it all sit and just marry together for a few minutes. And you'll see any excess liquid is becoming thicker and getting absorbed to the pasta even more right now. So the second we take it out of the pot and we transfer it into a bowl to serve, it's gonna be right on the money. So in three minutes, we're gonna serve this up. Just let it sit here. All right, and it's been three minutes, and guys, now look at this. See, now when you just let it set here for a few minutes and rest, how perfect this is. It's not watery at all. It's become an unbelievable sauce as everything has combined together. And now it is time to take this thing of beauty in the pot and serve it up. Now, because we're using long noodles like a linguine, even though they're cut in half, they're still gonna feel long even though we broke them. Don't you worry. I think the best thing to do is to take some tongs. It's the easiest way to serve. So make sure you get some of that amazing linguine out of there, that lemon linguine, I should say, and then transfer some of it to a delightful little dish here. Some people like to do the little twirl when they drop it in. I learned that from my food stylist with my cookbook. <laughs> I didn't do a great job out of it now, but I mean, like if you know me, you know presentation isn't my forte. It just, it's about how it tastes. It still looks gorgeous though. And just a little bit more, some of that sausage on there. Mm, mm, mm. And I mean, guys, this looks beautiful so far. And now we can take our lemon zest and sprinkle some of it on top. And I'll just do a little bit of a thing with the fingers, as well as a little more Parmesan. And there you have it, guys. The most amazing spicy sausage lemon linguine ever. Let's try it out. And here it is. This delightful, delectable pasta. Here we go. Give it a little bit of a twirl around the fork. And look at this, guys. Again, yeah, it was cut in half, but look, it's still plenty long. Plus, you know what? It makes more portions this way, and it's less in terms of how much you're eating. It's perfect that way. I like it like this. Oh. 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 Banjo, I'm okay. I, I promise. I'm, I'm fine. I'm just having a little bit of a, of a food orgasm, if you will. Oh, wow, guys. Oh, the creaminess of the lemon in this pasta. I, I, this literally, words literally fail me. Yes. Ooh, ooh, that's how good this is. That's how good this is. Mmm. The mushrooms in there are perfect. It's a great touch to have the mushrooms in there for sure. You could even add some roasted red peppers if you want at the end. Really, the sky's the limit. Mmm. This could literally bring me to tears, it's that good. And not because it's spicy. Speaking of the spiciness, I would give this on a scale of like one to 10. It's one being the lowest and 10 the spiciest. Probably like a five and a half. And that's by putting the half a teaspoon each of crushed red pepper flakes and the cayenne pepper, as well as using hot Italian sausage. Again, hot Italian sausage isn't that spicy. It's pretty mild. It's a very mild, that's like a, a, a two on the 10 scale of spicy. But if you want it even spicier than this, I would say up it to a teaspoon, to even like a teaspoon and a half each of the cayenne and the crushed red pepper flakes. That's up to you. 
but I think it's great as is. You could also, of course, sprinkle some more on now. But this dish, whew, I'm telling you, they tell you if when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> Shenanigans. Don't listen to that advice. No. When life gives you lemons, you make lemon linguine. Spicy lemon linguine. Spicy sausage lemon linguine. Oh, look at this linguine. This is gonna become an instant favorite. I promise you. I guarantee it. But again, if you don't want any spice in there, just leave out any of the cayenne pepper or the crushed red pepper flakes and use sweet Italian sausage instead. But I love that spice. I mean, it's the pasta is also cooked to absolute perfection. Oh, I could eat the entire pot I, easily. And guys, it makes a lot of pasta. There's a lot going on in there. You can easily feed six people with this, at least six to even sometimes eight. If you're serving this as an appetizer, uh, definitely eight people, maybe even ten, because you're gonna just you know do like a simple tongue twirl full, whatever you want to call that, and that's what you'll probably just serve. But if you're making it like a dinner meal, I would say six people this is gonna feed, or maybe four really, really large appetited people. And I would say I can't imagine two people just splitting this pot, but honestly, <laughs> if you haven't dined with me, and if you have an appetite, <laughs> sit next to me and we'll definitely finish this together. Richard, on the other hand, he has a smaller appetite. It's not as large as mine, but I mean, I'm sure he's gonna absolutely love this one. Right now he's at work and I'm making this midday, so it's tough to give him a sample right now. He'll have plenty of what I have left over there for dinner. We'll just heat it up in the microwave. Very simple. Speaking of which, if you had extra and you wanted to reheat it, all you gotta do is just, you know, maybe add a little bit more of the cream and then just toss it in with the noodles and put it in the microwave and it's ready. But oh man, guys, what a dish. What a dish indeed. Guys, if you enjoy these videos and all these recipes, check out PressureLuckCooking.com because they all live there. They all do. Get my cookbook. Get my cookbook. It's uh, Just search Pressure Lock or Jeffrey Eisner online and cookbook. It's called the Step by Step Instant Pot Cookbook and it has over 750 photos, guys. Literally every single finished dish is going to have a final product in there. What it looks like, it's all made by me and everything has step by step photos along the way to guide you along the process. I mean, what more can you ask for in a cookbook? It is so easy to follow and it's going to make your mouth water when you look at these pictures. Check me out at Facebook, facebook.com slash pressure luck cooking and you know give it a thumbs up like that page and of course at pressure lock and pressure luck cooking on YouTube thank you for subscribing if you haven't what are you doing subscribe YouTube a Pinterest Instagram and Twitter tweet 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 twiddle I, I don't really tweet but Okay. And with that being said, I want to say thank you so much again to all of you for watching. And right now, I am living for the lemon linguine with the spicy sausage. Cheers. 